Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and today I want to look at gobos, okay? We want to look at gobos, talk about rotating versus fixed gobos, when to use gobos, and when it makes sense to use them in different ways. Uh, and ultimately, do you even need rotating gobos? Because not every fixture has them. Let's dive in. So here today, I've got two fixtures in front of me. These are two real favorites of ours, uh, the new Volex uh, Spectra 300 and the Gamma TX6. We'll get into why we've got two of these in a minute. The TX6 in blue, the Volex in amber, all right? Uh, so we've got those guys all ready to go. And uh, when it comes to gobos, both of these fixtures have fixed and rotating gobos. Now you're going to find in most fixtures like I mean, I would say 100% of the time, but let's just claim 90% here. Um, if a gobo's fixed, if it's not rotating, it's also not replaceable. Typically, rotating gobos can be replaced inside of fixtures uh, so that if you want to do custom gobos or change some of the gobos out, you can do that. Now, there's really going to be two kinds of gobos inside of any light. Let's take a look here. So, say I grab the, the Spectra 300 here. And we open it up. So this is our first gobo wheel. Um, this is the fixed. And so we've got gobos in here, like a beam reducer, uh, one with some uh, some lines there, triangle, circles, blah, blah, blah. So most of these, actually all of these on the fixed wheel, um, really the first, the first nine on the fixed wheel are definitely gobos that are going to look better as a in-air projection. Let's talk about that. So if I move these lights to the other side and we switch to either this camera or this camera, and I'm actually going to go turn my light off as well while we're here. At least turn it down. And, and we switch to this camera. We can very clearly see here in either camera two or three that, you know, these gobos through the air are just rocking, right? Um, we're seeing things like this one with the three dots gives you, it's not quite focused, but it gives you this really epic beam through the air, okay? So that's the first kind of gobo, and, and the type that, honestly, you're gonna see more uh, on those wheels, those, those fixed wheels. But then, once we get past gobo 10 on this Volux, and I do appreciate how they've done this, they've gone ahead, and they've given us a variety of gobos that look good projected, okay? So this one, you know, very similar to the one we've got on the TX6 here, um, and it looks great as a projection, okay? So uh, that one, this one, being that the, the difference really, as you can probably see, is that the, the ones designed for mid-air effects typically have a lot of negative space or black in them. Okay, they typically have very defined shapes and therefore those cut through the air really well. Um, but these ones in this fixture Gobo 10 and beyond look much better projected on surfaces. They don't have large defined areas with large amounts of black space. They're kind of scattered all over. And so like if we pull that, say we pop it back to our second position here. And we see, yeah, like, it looks cool going through the air, sure. I mean, anything does in haze. But, but at the end of the day, it doesn't look that good through the air. It's not as piercing through the air as if we go to one of the lower gobos that have a lot of definition to them. Now, say, for example, say we're in a gobo like this, okay, um, where it's got some good definition through the air. Okay, now this is a non-rotating gobo. However, uh, you might say, well, that's awkward to have this, this line, basically, and make it be non-rotating. But, but the purpose of this, and really the, to answer the question, do you really need rotating gobos, is you want to look at using the prism. Because in really any fixture that has a prism, I can't think of any fixture that has a prism that doesn't allow the prism to rotate. So... Um, if you're just going for the look where there's a, a something spinning in the air, 
you don't necessarily need rotating gobos. It can help, but it's not necessary. So for example, we'll pop our prism in. Now we've got three beams coming out of this. Let's look at it overhead. And then say we give it a little bit of rotate. You can probably see there how interesting, how complex that shape looks, right? Let's go ahead and just kick this guy off again. And so we take these fixed gobos, which are designed again, more for in the air projections. And when we go ahead and we rotate those, I'll switch between some different gobos here. We get much more interesting shapes with the prism rotating with the gobo in it than if we popped the prism out and went to one of the fixed gobos. Okay, uh, one of the, the more graphical gobos. Like, this is just not that exciting through the air. This is, is graphical, but it's just not that exciting through the air. Okay, um, let's talk about prisms and gobo interaction for just like a hot second though. Um, because this brings up actually a really excellent point. Okay, I'm in the dark. So say we've got our Gamma TX6 here, okay? Our Gamma TX6 has a prism, has a three facet, same as the Volux, um, and it looks okay, it looks, it looks fine through the air. But if we do only the eight facet prism, we actually get a hole in the middle of our beam on this fixture. And so that makes it so that especially if we switch to a gobo that's a little more sharp, that's a little more uh, built for air effects, like this one, we'll see that punchiness come through, we'll see it go through the air a little bit better, and I think you can see it in this. If I use like a beam reducer, for example, um, oh, that's on gobo shake. We get a little bit more of a graphical effect there, okay? Um, and so when we're talking about gobos, when we're talking about projections, um, it's definitely important to think about graphical versus not. Okay, so let's, let's, let's walk back here. So, so, so far, we've put some gobos through the air on both of these fixtures, right? We've gone ahead and we're in the wrong camera. We've gone ahead and we've put these, these fixtures, we've put gobos through the air, Get some lens flare near my head. That's not actually in real life. Um, and, you know, that looks cool. Gobos with really defined edges often look great through the air. But then the rest of the gobos in our palette, like the one we've got up here uh, in the Volux unit, and we'll just go ahead and pull up. Let's actually go to our rotating wheel in the gamma fixture. So I'm just going to go here, going to focus it real quick. And so now we can see that I've brought in a rotating gobo here on this gamma fixture, okay? Rotating gobos are great when you're shining on the wall, when you're shining on a surface. That's when we love to see rotating gobos. That's when they really shine because, you know, we can go through on the rotating wheel. There's a lot of great options. That one doesn't show up well because it's blue color. Um, but a lot of these look really great when projected on surfaces, especially if, you know, you might say, okay, I'm not feeling the tortellini uh, on this one, but you take a tortellini like that and you start to soften it, and then maybe you add a prism, and all of a sudden, you've got a really great look for projecting on a surface, right? If we went back to a different gobo, like this one, um, it's more of a beam effect. It looks okay on the surface, but it gets that really defined edge, which doesn't get me excited at the end of the day, um, because it just, I, it doesn't, it's not as nice as the soft edge of something like this or the tortellini, right? So when it comes to choosing whether you want rotating gobos or not, it's, it's a bit of a loaded question. Um, at the end of the day, most modern fixtures, whether it's a fixture with a couple prisms like the Gamma TX6, whether it's like this Volux Spectra 300, which is kind of my new favorite CMY fixture. Um, and, you know, it's got a variety of fixed gobos and rotating gobos and a prism. Um, and so at the end of the day, 
Um, don't think that if you don't have rotating gobos, you just have fixed gobos, you might have a rotating prism. Like you could still get that feeling of rotation, right? Because right now, like for example, in this TX6, okay, the tortellini, it's rotating, right? So say we set it to stop, and then we go and we rotate the prism, okay? It's not that much different of a look having a non-rotating gobo with a prism that is rotating. Is it different? Yes, of course it's different but it's not something to make a deal breaker by any means. Um, you know, there's gonna be some fixtures, especially if they're more oriented to like a beam fixture, where yeah, the gobos aren't gonna rotate in a lot of beam fixtures. But oftentimes you can rotate the prism, still get that feeling of texture, still get the same thing artistically without having a gobo that rotates. So at the end of the day, I've kind of got two takeaways that I want you to get out of today's video, okay? The first is just because a gobo, a fixture doesn't have rotating gobos, uh, doesn't mean it's a lost cause. You can still get that feeling of rotation when you stick the prism in and rotate it. Rotate it. Yes, it's going to be wider. Like there's always caveats, right? But ultimately, you still get that feeling of rotation. You can still get the look, okay? Um, and then, even when you have a fixture with rotating gobos. It doesn't mean the fixed gobos are useless, okay? They're good for air effects, but even if you don't have haze or atmosphere in the air, even if you don't have the ability to have those air effects, um, you're still totally able to take those fixed gobos, uh, use the ones that are more oriented towards projection, that have a little bit more going on, that are a little busier, not quite as defined, and you can still use those by themselves in combination with prisms and get a great look out of them. So no matter what kind of gobo you have, I hope this video has helped you get the most out of it. Or if you're looking at fixtures, you're like, okay, we know we need to get something. We're not sure what, that's where we step in. Here at Learn Stage Lighting, we are all about helping people get the best lighting possible for their situation. And so what we do is if you go over to learnstagelightinggear.com, you can fill out our contact form or add some lights to your cart and request a quote today. We would love to look at your particular lighting situation, what you already have, what you're trying to do, and give you personalized recommendations. And the beautiful thing is, we don't just look at one brand, two brand, three brands. We have lots of brands. We look at the entire industry when we consider making a recommendation to someone. And we make the recommendation that is the best fit to you. So we often may go with one brand or another with one person, and then go with a completely different brand for somebody else. We, we're really not brand loyal um, because ultimately what we want to do is find the best fit and the best value for every customer. And if that resonates with you and you're in the U.S., we would love to help you out at LearnStageLightingGear.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks.